hey friends so welcome to part two of the terraform series in the first video we deployed a static website using terraform as our infrastructure as code tool to azure storage so in this one we're going to implement best practices for terraform so you guys remember we had one file for the terraform code that was called main.tf in this one we will separate um, the variables into a different file and then also i'll go through what the tf state is so the terraform state file and how we can leverage remote backend to manage that state file whereas in the previous one we saw that we stored that state file locally so there could be conflicts if there are multiple engineers working on the same project so we'll leverage some of the best practices in Terraform in this video. So let's jump into the demo. So in the last video, we had a static site, which we are currently seeing here, and we had it deployed to Azure storage using Terraform. And for our Terraform code, we had nothing crazy. So we only had one single file called main.tf and our variables and all our resources those were needed were in that same file and i've already went ahead and created uh, the resources those are needed here uh, for the remote backend and i'll make sure to include the script so it's a basic bash script that goes over and creates the resource group the container and then the storage account for that container too and if we go here take a look at our resource groups so it has reshub dot or reshub tf state and that has a storage account so we'll use that as our backend here and if we jump back to main.tf so the next step would be to have a file called backend.tf here so let's name it backend.tf and then to set our backend here, the code for it is something like this. So the backend we are using here is Azure RM and you can use anything. So you could also use S3 for AWS and I don't know what the offering is for Google Cloud yet, but yeah. You can use any object storage basically what i'm trying to say is and then we know what the resource group uh, is called from the azure portal here so if you go to resource groups it's called reshub tf state so reshub tf state and then the storage account name why is he i don't have a comma here and then i think the storage account name was different so we'll go take a look yep so it has some random numbers at the end oops and then go ahead and to the container name so the container name again i think it's reshub tf state but we'll double check yep so it's reshub tf state so that looks good and then the last thing is the key so I won't show what I'm going to paste in the key section here, or I don't know, I'll probably delete it later. So yeah, let's go ahead and copy our key here to our key section. So that looks right, I think. Yep. And if we save that and let's open up our terminal here. So remember how to initiate Terraform, so it's Terraform init. 
So it's initializing the backend and it successfully configured the backend Azure RM. So it will automatically use this backend unless the backend configuration changes. So that looks pretty good. Um, so we have our remote backend set up right now, which is what we wanted. And now I think the next section would be to break down uh, the main.tf uh, into those three files that I mentioned in the beginning. So we'll call one of them as providers or provider since we are only using one provider. Um, so provider.tf then basically what I'm just gonna do is cut this out of here and paste it here and save it. I think I left some spaces. So, yeah. Let's get rid of those and save that. And then also we'll go ahead and declare some variables in our variables.tf. So let's go do this variables.tf. Um, I'm just gonna use control C, control V to save some time. So we have one, two, three, four, five variables here. So uh, location, a resource group name, the storage account name, the index document, and then the source content. So if we look at our main.tf, so one would be used as resource group, and then the we have the one for location, and also the index document and what type of document it is. So in our case, it will be HTML. And I think we also mentioned the source content. Yep. So that looks good. So now what we have to do is we have to utilize these variables in our main.tf. So what I'll do is make some changes here. So we'll go with var dot resource group name. And then the other one was location thing for the location. Yep. So you can also see how it's picking uh, the variables name itself or auto -pop populating them. And then the next thing would be basically the same uh, for other variables so var dot I think it's storage account so we are creating storage account and so storage account name storage account name like that and then we also have I think this looks good. Oh, I think we could use var.location here. And yeah, I think. Oh, oh we could use the type of file. So var.index. Yeah, let's call index underscore document. And then I think we are only left with source content. So here's the source content. So var dot source content. Oh, and we could use the same thing here. So var dot index document. I think that's it. So instead of specifying the values, uh, we will have it use variables and in order to define those variables we have a file called variables.tf which holds all our I think five variables and you can also see it says that location has two references in main.tf and then resource group name has only one reference and then I think yeah the index document has two references which is pretty good um, just to know like yeah this variable is being referred or not being referred like it would say zero references if there was no 
reference here made in the main.tf. And now what we have to do is either we can pass the variable values to our terraform apply command, or what we can do is think the best way I would say is to have terraform.tf vars. And you can read some documentation on how Terraform prioritizes file types. So would it prioritize the command you're running and the values of the variables in those commands or would it prioritize tfr file? So let's assign those variables the values that we need. So I'm just gonna copy and paste so that I don't misspell any of the variables because I've done that in the past. Um, so here's two, and we have storage account name. And then we have index document. The last one is source content. Okay, so storage account name, index document, and then, so location, I'll be using East US because that's the nearest for me. Resource group name could be anything, RG, Reshub, TF, 07, demo, whatever. Uh, storage account name, we'll go with the same, I'm not, I don't think it will be taken already. Um, and then index document uh, is our index.html. The source content would be h1. Um, what did we call the last one? So we had, hey friends, this website was, okay. Let's copy this and make a little bit of change. So hey friends, this website was deployed with Terraform on Azure storage and is a bit advanced <laughs> because we made all those changes to our Terraform code, so why not? Um, so yeah, let's save that and let's try Terraform plan here. Oops, I misspelled that. So Terraform plan. Okay, I think that looks better. Missing required argument. So on main.tf line six in the resource, Azure RM storage account here is required, but no definition was found. Okay, did I get rid of account here? Looks like I got rid of it. So we'll go ahead and specify our account here, which would be standard. And then you can also read more about account tiers on Azure. So these are specific to Azure. And if we save that and do Terraform plan again, should technically work. I don't think we, I don't think this is a required field. But yeah, let's let's try again. I think what happened is the access, the account tier got renamed as access tier. I think that's, that's how I would explain. Um, but yeah, I think we should be good now. Okay, so we have our output here. So go ahead and create all these resources as mentioned in the last video. So the plus sign basically means it'll go ahead and create all of these resources. And let's try doing Terraform apply now. So it'll ask us if we wanna push out those changes. So like it'll ask for another confirmation with yes or no. And we'll take it sweet time. So yes, let's approve that. 
and wait for our infrastructure to be deployed. A few moments later. Okay, and yeah, so we have our apply has been completed. It had a three resources and let's go into the portal and see what do we have here. So if I refresh that, we should have reshub TF07 demo and then 07 demo. If you go to static website, it should give us a URL. So let's go and test out our static website. And voila, here it says, hey friends, this website was deployed with Terraform on Azure storage and is a bit advanced. And that is basically what we had here in our H1 tag. And also I'd like to show you the state files. So they are in reshub tf state. Let's go to the container here where it's stored. And you can see we do have our state files here. So I'll always remember the state. So if we destroy the infrastructure right now, I'll know that it's destroyed. And then the next time we hit apply, it would know that it has to create all those three resources again. So that is the purpose of having a remote backend. And I hope I was able to advocate on some good practices you need to have when using Terraform for your infrastructure. So the first thing would be to break down your single file architecture. So just don't have main.tf. Instead have like backend.tf for your remote backend settings. And then variables um, to define your variables and also provider. So in our case, we only used one, but I have been working with Terraform at my work and like you could be using multiple providers uh, in your Terraform file. So it comes in handy. It's easy to maintain when working in a team. But yeah, that was the demo and hope you guys liked it. Please keep supporting and I'll see you in the next video.